I'm Roman Seisel and I'm going to present a work on improving sound event detection in domestic environment using sound separation. Here is how the talk is going to be organized. First, I will present our motivations. Then I will describe how we integrate sound event detection and sound separation. I will present some experiment and conclude the talk. Our goal here is to improve sound event detection, in particular in a case of overlapping target event and overlapping target event with non-target event or with noise. The solution we propose is to use sound separation as a pre-processing. Let me first remind what we do when we do sound event detection. Given an audio recording, we aim at knowing what is happening during the recording, but not only what is happening, but when it is happening. Now in real scenario, we usually have not only one single target event, like frying here, but we can have multiple overlapping target event, plus some non-target event that we usually consider as noise. So we are dealing with rather complex landscapes here. The idea is that what we did until, until now was just to deal with the mixture directly with the sound event detection without explicitly separating the sources and relying only on the sound event detection to discriminate between the overlapping sources. What we propose to do here is to first process the sequence with a sound separation system to obtain several clips that are related to several sound sources. Then we are going to feed those several clips to the sound event detection system to perform overlapping event detection. One of the questions here is how do we integrate the separated sound sources? So let us first take a look at the sound event detection system we are going to use. The, it's a CRNN trained as a mean teacher student. The um, most important part for the rest of the talk is that we are relying on the CRNN. If you want more info about the system, then you can check the presentation by Nicola Turpo on L6 at 4.30 on Monday. Now regarding the sound separation, we are using a variable sound separation model. So we start by setting a maximum number of sources. Here we choose to set the number to 4. And then active sources are indicated with waveforms that are non-zeros, and inactive sources are indicated with waveforms that are zero. To compute the loss function, we first align mixture consistent separated sources with the reference sources, so the blue and the yellow sources here in the figure in the bottom. And then we pad all the sources to M sources with zero sources. We split the sources in subset with active subset and inactive subset. So a source is uh, decided to be active when we got a SNR that is higher than minus 30 dB between the source and the background. Then we compute separately a cost on the active sources and a cost on the inactive sources. I talked about uh, mixture consistency. So the idea here is that we project the estimated sources such that they would add up to the original source. So that's what mixture consistency is about. Now, my question was, how do we combine the sound event detection and the sound separation? One first idea would be to say, I have a few streams related to sound sources. I'm going to feed them as channels to my CNN, to my CRNN, and then just perform the sound event detection based on this multi-channel input. This would be interesting if we were actually interested in correlation between all the separated sources, which is not necessarily the case. So the second idea is that I'm going to feed each of the sources separately to the CNN part. Then, after the CNN part, I will have an embedding level representation. I'm going to concatenate uh, the embedding for all the separated sources and then feed the concatenate concatenated representation to the RNN part and perform the sound event detection. The final approach is to perform sound event detection on each of the separated sound sources and then perform an integration at the decision level. Let me now present the experiment. So the sound event detection is task for baseline. It's trained on this set data set and it's evaluated within the task for setup. Once again, if you want more info about this, please go and check Nicolas' presentation on L06 Monday at 4.30. 
The sound separation is a time domain correlational network and it's trained on the free universal sound separation dataset. So the free universal sound separation dataset, the first dataset, is composed of sound source collected from, in, uh, from the free sound 50k uh, dataset that has been released in early October. We have roughly 10,000 clips which total which amount of total of 23 hours we split between five uh, seven thousand training file three thousand validation file and two thousand evaluation file we have from one to four sources per clip and we create twenty thousand clip for training one thousand clip for validation and one thousand clip for evaluation each of the clip is lasting 10 seconds Plus, we can have dry and wet version of the clips. So for the reverberated version, we apply room impulse responses to each of the sources. Regarding the, the metrics we are going to use so for the source separation, we are using the scale invariant signal to noise ratio. We have two different scale invariants. So when we have two or more sources, we are using the multi-source uh, SCSNR. And when we have only one single source, we are using the single source SISNR. Regarding the sound event detection, we are using event-based F1 score and the polyphonic sound event detection score. First experiment is to use sound separation train on FUS and apply it as a preprocessing to the sound event detection. We are considering here the reverberated case and the dry case. And as we can see, in terms of uh, sound separation, then the system trained on the reverberated case is performing better. In terms of sound event detection, then it's the system with uh, sound separation trained on the dry, um, on the dry clips that is performing better. This is probably due to the fact that for the one trained on the reverberated uh, mixture, we have uh, inconsistency between the first dataset and the uh, this set data set. So this led us to try a second experiment where we were trying to train the sound separation not only on first data set but on combination on first and this set. So the first case is trying to separate first from this set mixture. The second idea is to separate first from this set foreground and this set background. The third one, the PIT, is trying to separate this set background, first mixture, and five different this set foreground sources, so five different target events, regardless of the classes. Then we have the class-wise approach, where we are trying to separate this set background, the dry folks first mix, and ten different sources for ten different classes. And the final one is trying to separate this set background, five this set sources, foreground sources, and also the five sound sources from the first uh, background. Here is the performance we are obtaining. So, regarding the sound separation performance, we have the best performance with the background, foreground first, so the third line, which is actually developed exactly for this task, so it's not surprising. But it's not the best performance in terms of um, uh, sound event detection. And so, in terms of sound event detection, we obtain the best performance with the late integration. And uh, we obtain the best performance with the, the PIT trained in terms of PSDS or with the class-wise training. We can also notice that early and middle integration fail to improve compared to the baseline. And the final aspect is that even with um, Sound event detection, sound separation that is trained specifically on this set, then we have performance that are not matching the performance obtained with the sound separation train on drive first. So this probably means that we have mismatch between the sound separation and the sound event detection data set, and we have also probably some generalization problem. So we have been uh, applying sound separation as a preprocessing to deal with complex mixture. Complex mixture. The idea was to deal with a uh, target ev overlapping event and also uh, overlapping ev overlapping non-target event and noise. We did obtain improvements, even though it was minor. 
and there is uh, the reason for that is probably that there is a need for a better integration and also probably better match the sound separation and the sound event detection training and test data set and procedure thank you for your attention if you want to if you want to know more about that please join us uh, on the discussion panel related to this session and also on the channel related to task 4 thank you bye